I am as confused as your average body positivity activist at a salad bar right now, because I am about to give a Yo Gamer Recommends seal of approval to a game called Monster Train. Monster Train of all things, a game that has an excuse instead of a story, a game that can't be bothered to reward you with one teeny tiny final cutscene after subjecting you to hundreds of hours of pain, a game that has Monster Train for a name. Welcome to Ye Old Entertainment, and welcome to another episode of Ye Gamer Recommend. And I know that I am going off the rails with this one, <laughs> but don't worry, that Fallout video. He's coming. He said it, he said it's coming now. Oh, but I am as excited to tell you about this one as your average body positivity activist at an all-you-can-eat buffet. So let's get to it. Monster Train is a tactical card game that follows in Slay the Spire's footsteps. And let me put it this way, Diablo 2 is the best in class in the isometric hack and slash ARPG world and Grim Dawn is its best disciple in my opinion. Fallout is the best in class in the post-apocalyptic CRPG world. And Under Rail is its best disciple, again in my opinion. XCOM is the best in class tactical turn-based game and Phoenix Point is your best bet if you are looking for more like XCOM. Well, Slay the Spire is the best in class in the tactical card game world. Not counting the trading card variety, I mean, before you lose your shit in the comment section. And well, Monster Train may very well be its best disciple. But what about Tainted Grail? Yes, yes, that's the best one indeed. Apart from, of course, playing the game part. Shout out to Dan Gilboa for recommending this one. Your goal in this game is to take your train, the Bone Shaker, safely through the nine circles of hell. Hordes of angels, seraphs, faded porn stars, and other insipid goody doers will try to prevent you from reaching your destination. And if you defeat all of them, you'll come face to face with The Last Divinity. If you have The Last Divinity DLC, which is a little bit pricey given its actual value, I suggest you get this one only if you like the base game and only once you have maxed out all the other factions. Not sure that expansion pack deserves a old gamer recommends seal of approval, but back to the content that does deserve it though. These encounters play much in the same way they do in games like Slay the Spire, except there is a twist. The Bone Shaker transports a pyre and you must protect it at all costs. And the precious rare magical engine sits at the fourth floor of your train. That means that those pesky goody doers have to get through three floors of hellish fiends to get to it and you must do everything within your monstrous power to stop them. And to that end, you'll have the aid of five, or six if you have the DLC, of the most prominent factions in hell. And they are all deliciously deep in terms of their strategic possibilities. Only two of them will be available at first, because yes, Monster Train is a roguelike. And this also means that every time you play the game, depending on how far you get and how many hordes you defeat, you unlock new clans and new cards. And just like Slay the Spire and every other game worth its salt in the ballpark, there are three unwritten tiers of fun to be unlocked here because the game is easy to learn and hard to master, for the first few runs you won't have to concern yourself with elaborate tactics or with the strategic approach your clan is best suited for. You'll have a blast just making it through a few encounters as you learn the basics of the game. You'll probably even finish the non-covenant run without too much of a hassle. But soon the time will come for you to unlock the second tier of fun. You have 25 levels of hellish covenant challenge to conquer, and getting through those requires you to start thinking about tactics, coming up with a plan for each floor, looking at card synergies and cross-clan synergies, which is one of the things I like the most about this game. You choose a primary clan and a secondary clan for every run. Each clan has a champion, and your choice of champion more or less dictates how you should approach the next run. And once you've leveled a clan beyond a certain level, you'll get access to the clan's exiled champion. What the fuck are you talking about, Alex? Clans? Champions? That sounds like some mobile game bullshit right there. I know, I know. I also thought about this, but hear me out. Unlike mobile games, this game has some serious strategic depth. And let's take a look at the champions for a moment here. The Little Fade, which is the Melting Remnants exiled champion, for example, can only take one hit, 
but one possible upgrade route for this little guy gives him the endless talent, which means that he goes back to the top of your draw pile every time he dies, and every time he returns, he gets a plus 20 damage bonus. I'm pretty sure that you can see the potential here, even if you have not played the game. The Rector Flicker, for example, which is the standard champion for the Melting Remnants again, has the talent to bring back to life defeated units at the end of the turn. So the Melting Remnants are all about resurrecting and bringing units from other clans back from the dead. That's kind of their strategic deal. And the fact that you have a secondary clan that you can bring along for the ride means that you can maybe combine these Melting Remnants with, say, a clan that's rich with creatures that possess skills that trigger upon summoning. And therein lies the strategic beauty of this game. Every clan has cross-clan synergies with every other clan, much like colors in Magic the Gathering, and this makes Monster Train dangerously addictive to play. In Slay the Spire, shops are rare, and you often have to choose the most dangerous path to even get to them. And many times you won't even be able to buy most of the items there. It's a hard game that makes you work for every inch beyond Act 1. But that's not the case with Monster Train. After every successful encounter, you'll come to this little park, filled with all sorts of hellish amenities. There are facilities for you to upgrade your spells, units, and champions, little magma thingies to restore your pyre in case it got a little bit scuffed, etc. The first time I arrived to one of these, I thought, Oh my god, what is this? I don't know what I like. And at first, I felt like these parks filled with facilities and all the bonuses and enchantments I got from them were giving me a bit of an OP boost. But trust me, this is not the case, because the challenges that ensue more than make up for these seemingly overpowered improvements. But I won't deny they'll make you feel good and confident about your deck. I would also like to mention that production values in this game are top notch, and the art is solid, engaging, and cohesive. You can tell that the devs and artists had a blast making this game. I think this is also a good time to confess that I am a huge sucker for these little recurrent sounds that some monsters make in some games, you know the type. Those that seem to make no sense but have little easter eggs hidden away within them. Like these little creatures who say Raggedicio in Diablo 2 and then it turns out that the meanest of them is a boss whose name is Raggedicio. Or when the goblins yell in a barely discernible way It's a human in Dragon's Dogma or Brutal Brutality in Bart's Tales 4. Well, I am a sucker for that, and you have your fair share of those little sounds here, like the exiled champion of the Wormkin who goes pew 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 when he shoots his whatever that is, or those throwaway morsel mobs who say what's up when they are summoned. And speaking of sound, Monster Train has killer music. It's got a few odd choices here and there, but also its fair share of proc metal tunes, which I think are an absolute perfect fit for this game. All in all, I had a blast with this game. And I am actually making this video in part as a way to tick the box and move on to something else, because if I don't, I fear I might play myself into oblivion with this one. That's how addictive Monster Train is. But make no mistake about it, it's not perfect. And I think its most relevant flaw lies in the tactical aspect of the game. See, in Slay the Spire, and in trading card games like Magic the Gathering or Gwent, building your deck is certainly where most of the fun lies. That's the strategic aspect of the genre. And that includes Monster Train, of course, which is excellent in this respect. But actually playing your deck is also very important. And one thing that you have to give Magic the Gathering and Gwent credit for is that you won't ever play your deck the same way twice. Not ever. Because your opponents have different decks, and even if games like Gwent have become a little bit too meta-driven and you see the same deck popping up with irritating frequency, everyone has a different idea about how to play it. But this is not only true of online collectible card games in which you play against other people online or in the real world, and yes, those are two different things, Twitter users. But it's also true of Slay the Spire and Tainted Grail Conquest especially with the latest patches. Yeah, if you felt like Tainted Grail Conquest was a little too easy, you should try upgrading it with the latest patches. In these games, you have to give some thought to the way in which you actually play your deck, and while you might have an overarching strategy and some reliable go-to tactics, if you don't take the time to evaluate every combat encounter, 
chances are the game will eventually hand your ass over to you. And I don't think Monster Train is quite up to par in that department. I often felt like I was using the same combos time and time again all the way through. This was of course greatly mitigated by the fact that runs in this game are rather short and by the fact that there are many possible combinations of clans and champions for you to experiment with, and chances are you are going to want to try them all out. But the fact remains that with the exception of one or two encounters, you'll be playing your deck in a very similar way in most encounters, so if you are a hardcore Slay the Spire fan, this is something you should be aware of. Also, I find it a little bit frustrating that you don't even get the tiniest succession of stills once you finish the game for real. Not that it matters too much in this genre, but still. Listen, this game will not dislocate your brain with some convoluted fourth dimensional narrative, it will not take you on a Kafkaian journey of Arthurian dark fantasy, but damn, I promise you are going to be entertained like you've never been entertained before. And it's all about the game mechanics. It also has your standard array of addiction inducing online features like racing against other players online, a leaderboard, player created challenges, etc. Monster Train gets a solid Yo Gamer recommendation for card and non card gamers alike, because I see many of you liking this one, even if the genre is not necessarily your jam. And that's all I have for you today. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thank you for watching all the way up until now. If you like what you are seeing on this channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell to avoid the usual YouTube shenanigans. Share the video, but most importantly, never stop gaming. Don't let gaming get in the way of your hopes and dreams. Bye, everyone.